It's time for what I hope will be another interesting episode of this Draft of Glory series. And I say hope to be because while the team has been improving, the draft quality has kind of declined over the last two years or so. Hopefully, <laughs> let me use that word for the third time, this is the episode where we have another strong draft to really help solidify what we got going on here. Shout out to that guy. If that picked up over the microphone... Oh boy, you know, before I started recording, I'm like, should I shut that window? It's kind of hot in here, and I didn't, and Girlfriend24 happens to live uh, closer to a, a main road than I do in my place, <laughs> and it can cause some issues sometimes. Regardless, uh, looking at the team, Bobrovsky and Rask will probably re be re-signed. I mean, actually, I might as well just re-sign them. There's really no reason not to. I'd drop them to the free agent list and then bring them back so that they don't rot away on said free agent list. So we'll re-sign those two. Arusia and Kusino, of course, good to go. Kusino up to a 66. Hopefully it's closer to a 70 by the time the season actually starts. Defensively, uh, Rycroft needs to be brought back. Medium top six, it appears to be another, or it still appears to be like the same potential that it was where you just really don't see players develop. And that scares me if medium top six is going to work the same way that it did last year. We're, of course, also going to be signing Bates. Drepo can come back as well. No problem there. And from there, Bouchard and Levineau. We might as well sign these two. Or Lenevo, I guess. Might as well sign those two, even though we know that they're never going to make it. On the wing. Uh, actually, you know, I say that some of these exempt contracts could be interesting. Let's sign LaPierre. I mean, 70, uh, 77 overall, 22 years old. It's pretty nice. Uh, DeMay is another one of those guys where it's like, I just don't think he's going to make it long term. Savard needs to be signed. Hopefully he can continue to improve. And then Hawkins is one of the other big contracts. We'll go ahead and sign him to what he wants. And Vitasek to what he wants. So we'll sim forward a day. Just make sure everybody is good to go. So we have 11 exempt contracts at this point, which is manageable. No expiring there for defense, and then unsigned, none. Okay, so the forwards So what we have to double check here. We have a couple of deals that are up, including Josh Lawrence and his stupidly high trade value, which again, if they don't fix trade values, I am likely to end up doing a series that a lot of people have asked for, which is where, you know, we'll just go crazy and we'll just take advantage of garbage ass trade values and build a super team and have fun. You know, I've done that type of series before on this channel. I've done it on the Patreon. It's not my favorite type of series to do, but if it makes sense, then damn it, we'll do it. I mean, really, if we're left with no options, I felt like we were left with no other option but to just sit here and do Draft of Glory because it's the one thing that makes sense. That way we take away trade values. Regardless, it's just sad. It really is. This game's been out for over a month and a half, and it is just sad. Regardless, with that, 43 players under contract, 15 under exempt deals, 19 million in cap space. I might have to sign a veteran to help fill out the roster, but we should be good to go. I am going to have to redo the scouting department really quickly, but that shouldn't be a big deal. I think the coaching staff is still up to snuff. We shouldn't have to uh, shouldn't have to do anything there. Uh, you know, Drew Doughty, congratulations, because Drew Doughty hasn't been paid enough money in his goddamn career. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and pay Drew Doughty a boatload of money to play in the AHL this season, and we should be good. Let me double check the coaching staff again here. And yeah, ooh, Sidney Crosby, I think, dropped from a B- minus to a C. So, uh, yikes. But for the most part, the coaching staff is still okay. You know, I, I guess there are a couple of player or a couple of options that we could bring in, like a Joe Pavelski, to technically improve it, but there's really no point. So let's bring in four scouts, or at least two others. I think we'll bring in Roger Madden and Bjorn Mebus. Yeah, we don't need the full we don't need the full 20. So I don't think we're really gonna have to jump cut anything until we get to the season sim. Uh, which to be honest, uh, people want to see the season sim, is what they were saying after the last episode, because again, uh, playing on the Xbox Series X, 
I mentioned on Twitter that the end in the last episode actually that the loading times or say or the sim uh, times you know loading time for the sim time uh, is fast compared to what we're used to and it's true despite the fact that there's no update you know unlike Madden and FIFA which are getting that next gen update I don't believe there's an update coming for the NHL series uh, so this game is what it is on next gen but yeah we'll I'll show I'll show you we'll uh, take it slow and steady with this episode but Russia and Kusino no improvement there for Kusino I don't believe. Actually, it might have been a 66. Now he's up to a 67. I was hoping for at least a 68. You know, split the difference between a 70. But the goaltending remains the same. We still desperately need a goalie. Uh, we have Hugo. Dowdy dropped, which obviously we're not going to play him anyway. Let's go ahead and drop you down to the AHL. So Laflamme, Suave, Sauve, uh, Plandowski, or Plandowski, Rycroft, Aroshi, Prance, and Jenkins. Right. I mean, Jenkins is the one to get dropped. That is our six. It's not ideal, but it's the best we got, unless we go off of potential, which makes a lot more sense. So, Sove playing makes sense. Plandowski's not going to get any better. Rycroft's not going to get any better. Right. None of the bottom four are going to get any better at this stage. Do we have options here? We could play Simon Belmar. We could play Sean Bates as well. Traverse in a medium seventh. Yeah, see, it's it's glitched. Like, I'm on Bates. I go down to Traverse. Sometimes it uh, just brings you back to previous players. The game is so goddamn weird. Uh, Bouchard, friggin' Kamachi. Yeah, it's sometimes glitched on scrolling. Uh, Belmar and Bates, we might as well play at the NHL level and hope for the best. So we'll drop Brantz. Or maybe not, because technically... That might push us over too many players under contract. We'll see. For the forwards, we have, what is that, 10, 11, 12 with Burns. So I can't call up Belmar and Bates right now because they're under exempt deals, and that means technically I'd have too many players signed. Uh, so I still at least want to call up Bates. And still, actually, that would have us over the limit. All right, well, cool. Then that's that's our six then. And the strategy of just signing everybody is coming back to uh, haunt me a little bit here. Down the AHL. You got Dandano. You got Marcourt, who could get called up now. Marcourt and Hannon are the two interesting ones. As opposed to Burns and Lawrence, who just aren't going to improve. I think we'll call up Marcourt and Hannon and play them in a more ideal role with some top talent. So yeah, Josh Lawrence, who's worth almost as much as Connor McDavid, is going to be in the minors. Fun. Uh, but we'll go best lines here. Let's take a look. Goaltending, of course, is good to go. Defensively, let's see what we have here. DeRosha doesn't really fit on that third pairing, nor does Rycroft. Plandowski is okay. So Plandowski definitely has to be on that third pairing. And aside from that, pretty much everyone fits in the same exact way. <laughs> um, I would say that works. Yeah, we'll go Rycroft, DeRocher, Brant, or DeRocher's, uh, Brant, Plandowski, Sove, and uh, Laflemme. And then forward-wise, what are we going to do here? Two-way, two-way, sniper, two-way, two-way, another sniper in Marcourt. Power forward in Boucher. Hawkins is a power forward, playmaker, sniper. Okay, so this is going to be the top six because these guys are going to be more of a skill role. He's better on the second line. Hannon's better on the third line, but it doesn't matter. Marcourt can play anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Okay, so it doesn't really matter where they play then. Right wing, right wing. We have a ton of right wings as well. So the best centerman, Marcourt, can be there. Uh, Huckins had the next best face-offs, I guess, in case somebody gets booted out is how we'll judge it. So the big question is, can we get better than a plus one? I don't think we can. So, I mean, LaPierre, LaRue, Hawkins, Boucher, Marcourt, Hannon isn't that bad for a top six. You know, it's a shame we only have one playmaker. But that is about the best we can do. Unless... Ooh, we could get a plus three, though, with Marcourt, LaRue, Hawkins. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the plus ones, I think. LaPierre doesn't have much... No, you know what? We got to go for that. That might help Marcourt turn into a true number one center. So we have to try it. And then for the bottom six, I'm not really as concerned. 
Justin Gill and Duchesne will be the centers. Natural center, natural winger. Uh, I guess the big thing here will be can we improve the plus one anywhere? And we can. Uh, so it'll be Demay Gill or Savard Gill and Demay Vitasek with Duchesne and Lashing. So that's not that bad, really. I mean, obviously, it's not great. But the team has certainly been worse, and obviously you'd hope that the team would improve at some point. But we definitely have. Uh, Drew Doughty needs to sit for Kamachi. And then I don't think we're going to be playing Ronaldo. Low sevenths. Jenkins is already just a medium top six. Ronaldo's a low seventh. Yeah, it doesn't really, doesn't really help. Uh, can we avoid... We can. So let's go Hunwick Rude, Jepo, Traverse, Jenkins, Kamachi. And then for the forwards, just to make sure that we're not missing anybody. Okay, good. Everyone there is at least our prospect. I mean, Bochensky at a low nine. Barbashev isn't going to get any better. Canning isn't going to really get any better. Isn't going to get any better. I mean, the low nines, we could maybe kind of hope there's going to be somewhat of a breakout, but... Obviously, it's very unlikely. Veneer, Vanier, whatever. Uh, you need to be brought in. Yeah, for the most part, everyone else just kind of sucks. We're just going to go with the highest rated players. So I think Froats is in over Bochensky. And then the lowest rated guy from there is uh, Jean Robida. But I think uh, he has the edge on everybody but Canning and Barbashev, but he has a better potential. So that'll be the team. I just want to get rid of that minus. There we go. So that is the AHL set. It's brutal, of course, but we'll see what happens. Somewhat optimistic about where the NHL is right now. Hopefully, again, someone like LaRue can really help turn things around for some of these other forwards. Now, quickly, let me go to the queue. And reassign these two scouts. And we'll sim to the beginning of the preseason. That should give us some of the early uh, information here. Or I guess to the end of the preseason, the beginning of the regular season. And then we should have some information on what's going on with some of our other players. So let's go ahead and do that. Shouldn't really take all that long. Thankfully, it's a nice little change. There we go. Quick and easy. And we will go to our first game of the season, which is against the Carolina Hurricanes. And just to take a look at what the overall rating happens to be for the team. 76, 73, and a 61 in goal. We're getting better. We're getting better. Like, we're a decent AHL team at this point in terms of well-roundedness. <laughs> Maybe a, a top-notch AHL team. So we're definitely getting better. Let's take a look at the draft class. Moment of truth here to see if we have anybody available. So we go to the queue. There are three, four players actually. Yeah, five technically that should be in the first round. Rafael Plus is not one of them, nor is Hugo Duchesne. But we do have Wes Corazzini. Might be a medium elite. So he is definitely a player to watch. He's currently being scouted. Uh, we also have... Well, if I set on uh, by Como, oh, Corazzini, though, being a two-way is uh, interesting. we got quite a few Americans as well. But again, Shikudami, Valdor, I wish by Como was available to us. It is not. Rio Naranda, also not available. So clearly, it's going to be Corazzini in the first round. And we have to hope that he's actually a medium elite. Uh, Blainville, uh, mm. what about the Shop? Okay, so we got a Moncton player, not bad. Quebec, by Como, Ramouski, by Como, St. John, Laurent, Drew and Delorier. So we at least look to have a player in each of the first three rounds. Uh, and Meloc could also be available to us. Schwinnigan, Gatineau, Valdor, Ramouski, Victoriaville, Halifax, Marcel Bergeron, potentially in the fourth round. So quality could be a concern. Cape Breton with Rayholm. Uh, who I thought was an overager, but apparently not. Quality could be a concern. But it looks like we're at least going to have some options here through the first couple of rounds. We're not going to be picking complete scrubs by round four, in theory. I mean, guys who are projected to not even be drafted, right? So with that, 
we at least know that there are a couple of players to look forward to. Let's go ahead and sim to the end of the season. We'll see how the team does, first and foremost. And we'll, uh, again, just kind of hope and pray that things are going to go. But you can clearly see already, uh, compared to, you know, the uh, the Xbox One era, uh, yeah, the sim speed is is much faster on the Series X. I haven't got my hands on a PS5 yet, so I don't know... Uh, how that sim speed looks, but yeah, the processing power of the Xbox Series X is very nice. Um, I don't know if this necessarily compares, like, NBA was pretty fast on the last gen, it's pretty fast again now. I do wonder about MLB The Show, who kind of had the gold standard for sim speed. And I don't know exactly how that's going to look now on a PS5. I'm intrigued, to say the least, but it feels like we actually have next gen level sim speeds, finally. Uh, when other, you know, when other teams or uh, other teams, when other games kind of had that standard uh, in prior years, but regardless, there you go. Look at the sim speed; it takes uh, a lot, a lot less time to have to go through this, which is very, very nice. So we'll list ourselves as sellers. Just continue simming as we do. But, yeah, feeling good. 16 wins on the year, by the way. If we could hit 25, I'd be happy. 20 is the low end where it's like, okay, we're, we're making some progress here. And it looks like 20 is where we're going to cap out. I doubt we're going to win 25 games now at this stage. Hell, we might not even hit 20. We are losing games hand over fist. We're not going to hit 20. Nope, 19. So 19, 53, and 10. For the Growlers this season, 69 points for LaRue. Nice. Uh, we weren't the worst team in the conference, though. That was the Bruins, only 35 points. That is one of the lowest totals I have ever seen for an AI team. Just 35 points for the Bruins. That is ridiculous. They were the worst team in the league by far. Uh, they could not score goals. Jesus, we had the third worst offense. Uh, we still had the worst defense and goaltending combination, but the Bruins just could not score goals. And yes, we will probably look at their roster. But to look at ours first, Hawkins with the 69 points, 64, or a 69 for LaRue, 64 for Hawkins, 52 for LaPierre, Gill with a decent 45, DeMay with 43, Boucher hit 25 goals, Lashing was there. Uh, so you notice there's somebody missing. Hannon's here, Marcourt, mm, Hannon and Marcourt, I mean 15 and 10 goals, but... The point totals overall were pretty brutal. But 220 goal scores, a lot of guys in the mid-teens. It's not that bad. And then defensively, 42 points for Hugo Laflem, 33 for Sove. So, I mean, we'll see how the player development happened to, you know, happened to play out, essentially. That's what we're hoping for. But maybe some lower point totals from some of the younger guys that I was hoping to see. So Connor McDavid, of course, led the way. In terms of points, goal-scoring king was Austin Matthews. Defensively, Merkley and Sandine. Holy shit. 83 points apiece. Merkley will probably win the Norris, though. Goal-scoring king is Heberlein and Shea Theodore, now in Pittsburgh. But the goaltenders, the winningest was Jesper Wallstead in Toronto. Save percentage leader, you could call it for Gustafson. And for the rookie race, Philip. Plant, a Philippi Plant, I should say, is going to win the Calder. So that brings another season to a close for us, at least. Uh, others, of course, continue on into the postseason. San Jose, Dallas, Vancouver, LA, Minnesota, Edmonton, Colorado, Chicago, and in the East Toronto, Buffalo, Florida, the Battle of Florida, uh, Pittsburgh, Ottawa, Carolina, and New York. And actually, we forgot to look at the Bruins. We forgot to look at the Bruins. Let's see uh, why the hell they were so bad and couldn't score goals. I mean, they have PLD and Pasternak. That is bizarre. Silas Morgan's an 89. Huh. All right, so it was just one of those seasons where it's like, okay, this team's bad for virtually no reason. I mean, Pesci's just not happy because of morale. Their defense leaves a bit to be desired. Corpusalo was bad, but oh, no, he was pretty brutal. Ah, interesting. I've seen worse constructed teams do better, uh, literally in the season. <laughs> they have a better team than we do, but hey, uh, I'll take it. You could argue it's uh, a positive 
to not have the worst odds in the draft. So yeah, I'll I'll take it. It's not too bad. As the Dallas Stars win the Stanley Cup, we'll see how that played out. They beat Buffalo in five, so the '99 rematch goes to Dallas yet again. Oscar Lindblom leading the way. You'd love to see it. Alongside the likes of Tuoma Latakainen, Ivan Lodnia, Troy Terry. So their rosters changed a lot at this stage. A ton. And of course they have Carter Hart. That's two consecutive cups for them now, isn't it? Yeah, back to back for the Dallas Stars. McDavid wins the Art Ross and the Hart. Merkley wins another Norris. Plant wins the Calder. Con Smythe the Lindblom. Vesna did go to Gustafson. No real surprise there. Giordano wins his third Jack Adams, which is insane. Ryan O'Reilly back in the state of New York, this time with the Rangers. And in the AHL, did we take home any hardware? The answer is no. So all in all, just kind of a, eh, hopefully there's a develop, better development season. And LaRue showing up as an 88 uh, is evidence that there was at least some development. So not too bad for him. Hugo now showing up as an 87. Hawkins at an 84. LaPierre is an 81. So we definitely saw some development here. Boucher up to a 77. It's not too bad. What else do we have here? I'm, ah, yeah, see, I had to wait a little bit longer to see someone like Aiden Hannon than I would have preferred to. And then down in the AHL, Bates up to a 70, which is pretty promising. Cousineau now up to a 69, Belmar a 69 as well. So, I mean, we are seeing development from certain players, but there are a lot of guys who are just kind of standing right where they are and making no improvement whatsoever, which really does kind of scare me for what this, for what the depth could be on this team. But with that, time to find out the lottery results. Fingers crossed, hoping for the best, and we fall to five, which is fine. We know that there really wasn't anybody available for us in the top five. So it wasn't all that terrifying. John Tavares retires as a member of the Leafs. Artemi Panarin ended up in San Jose somehow. And there you go. The top forwards to retire defensively. Carlson and Doughty. Of course, calling it careers. And for goaltenders, Bobrovsky and Rask both retire after being uh, paid a boatload of money. A boatload. As John Tavares becomes a coach. Tavares, Tavares, Tomatoes, Tamaris. And we shall see how this draft goes. So the early look at it was that we're going to be okay and that we should get some more decent players. We're not going to get any elite players. Corazini's a medium elite. And Deschamps is a... Oh, boy. Oh, baby, this draft. Hold on. Hold on. This draft could be something for us here. It really could be. Even if he's a lower-rated medium elite, that is huge for us. West Corazzini, son of former Bruin Carl. Yeah, so see, B's and C's, no weaknesses. He's three years out, but we at least have a medium elite from the Acadie Abathurst Titan, the Titan. Uh, yeah, West Corazzini, clearly our first-round pick, fifth overall, and he's a 64. How old was he? 17? He's 18. It's not bad, though. I will gladly take a player of that caliber, considering we've had to take medium top six forwards with the fourth overall pick before. <laughs> so it's not too bad. And defensively, I think we win again. Louis Deschamps, not bad. Medium four at 18 years old. Woo! Oh, baby. Okay, so the puck skills are brutal. He's slow as shit, but he plays physical, has good senses and good shooting. Two-year ETA with an Al McInnes comparison. Louis Deschamps, hello. Yes, please. 68 overall medium top four, so that's tremendous. That is tremendous. We get two players who are almost a, you know, a, a lock, a dead set certainty to be featured on this team over the coming years. So I'm very happy with that. I do wish Pelletier was available, but now we get the choice of Drew and Delorier or Marcel Bergeron. Mostly C's, three-year ETA for Jeran Delorier. We're going to go with Delorier here. The medium nine forward from St. John. 
62 overall. I'm I'm very happy with these first three picks. Now, if we could also get Bergeron, that would be great. But we're not going to. 61 overall, low top four. I'm happy with who we got. I'm very happy with who we got. So now is where the quality could dip a little bit. Oh, Realm. Oh, Realm. Don't, don't tease me here. Please. Could you imagine? Even if it's a low overall, medium elite, what that could mean for this team. Philippe Realm is the pick. Philippe Realm is a medium elite, but a 48 overall. What a haul in this draft, though. The question out of this episode will be, what do we do with Realm? Do we immediately play him in the NHL, or do we just wait? But two medium elites, a medium top four, a medium top nine. We are looking very good coming out of this draft. This might be our best draft top to bottom that we've seen. Now, the question is whether or not there is anybody else here that is actually projected to be drafted. Chris Penner. When then we Oh, two goalies and Penner and Turgeon. And we'll probably get both of them, which is good because we need goalies. So this is really coming together. Ooh, Geet out of Halifax. Okay, this, this just got a lot more interesting. We have three goalies here at the end of the draft. And what this could mean for us. Let's sort by potential here. So keeping's not available. Okay, so clearly, I, it comes down to the goalies. Oda Reyes, also known as Otterize. Not going to be that. Well, I mean, four year ETA is not bad. He actually might not be that bad. And then Pierre Leroy, we know nothing about. So then it comes down to the goalies. We have, and again, this is what, fifth round? Fifth round. Okay, so we have three more picks here. One of these guys projected to be drafted. So we could get the old Otter Eyes, Geet in the seventh, and then one of these two now. Turgeon or Penner. I mean, they're both kind of shit. I mean, the obvious decision is just go with Turgeon to hope for the best. Let's do it. Uh, we're going to take Mario Turgeon with the pick. Just hoping for the best medium fringe at a 57. That's okay. I was hoping for at least a starter, but that's okay. And now in the 160s, it's Penner or the Otter Eyes. We need goalies. I got to go for Chris Penner, the American. Let's take him. Penner is a high fringe, but only a 47 overall. And the seventh round will see us select Sylvan Geet from the Halifax Mooseheads, 19 years old. Going to be a very low overall, even if he is a medium elite, which he is. He's actually a 58. That is much better than I would have thought. So we had three goalies at the end, a medium fringe, a high fringe, and a medium elite. This was, by far, our best draft top to bottom. So that's what we were hoping for. Yeah, Otterias was terrible. So I'm happy. How could I not be? We had one of our best drafts, top to bottom. The team continued to improve. I mean, we're not on the fastest upward trajectory in the world, but we're getting there, right? And look at the goaltenders. Kusano is going to be our starter now, which is great. I do think... As a shout out to that car in the background. You gotta love it. I do think uh, we might have to buy some people out, potentially. <laughs> I think we definitely passed the point. Like, Hunwick is gonna have to be dropped. He's just not gonna develop. So I'm gonna have to free up some contract spots. But the big question now, what do we do with Geet? Do we play him in the NHL immediately behind Kusino? Or do we just leave him unsigned? And then you look at the forwards as well. What do we do with Realm? Leave him unsigned? Or put him next to Zach LaRue and hope for the best. Put him next to LaRue and Huckins, who knows what happens. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Those are the big decisions heading in to the next episode. I thank you very much for checking this video out. Of course, if you haven't already, drop a like and subscribe. Check out everything in the description. And again, uh, now that we're beyond the Hunt for Rumble charity stream and beyond American Thanksgiving, we should be back on track with these uploads. And of course, I want to shout out 
all of you lovely people that support me on Patreon. There will be a new episode up tomorrow of the Two Way Forward slash Two Way Defenseman Challenge that we have going up on that platform. So if you want to, if you want more of me, you want to help support me in these trying times, check us out on Patreon. Of course, link is in the description. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Until then, have a good one. Take it easy. Stay safe. And goodbye.